Okay, welcome back to Steel Flow TV. Thank you for joining the average golfer. Bit of ball testing uh, that we're going to do very, very shortly. The Taylor Made Project A golf ball. But before I get to that, I think I need to just step aside and let you just have a little bit of a look at that view. I'm filming here at uh, Abama Golf Club in uh, South Tenerife, Costa Adeki area. I've not played the golf course yet, I've had a bit of a drive round. I filmed some man versus golf hole challenges here uh, later on this afternoon, but from first glance, this looks pretty impressive place to be quite honest with you. So I'm using their great practice facilities. We've got some little par threes here where we're gonna test this Project A golf ball. It got sent to me from TaylorMade early part of this year, and it's kind of, it's premium-ish ball in terms of price range. UK pounds, this is retailing around the sort of £30 per dozen. So it's not at the top end in terms of TP5s, Callaway Chrome Soft, so um, Titleist Pro Vs. It's just falling just a little bit below that, but still, as Taylor made a claiming, offers some real great performance. And that's the way we're going to test it. So I'll do as ever. We're going to get some dry ball data back in the UK, which will be um, Pitching Wedge 7 Iron Driver. We'll discuss those numbers later. But for the time being, what I'm going to do, as I've done previously, is I'm going to plant a camera on the green. We'll hit some shots in from maybe sort of 100 yards out, then maybe a little bit uh, closer to the green. And we'll have a look at how this ball reacts when the ball is struck from at the average golfer. Um, then, unfortunately, the next time we sit down and discuss something will be with a less glamorous backdrop. I'll be back in the UK and we'll discuss the dry ball data, the stuff that I've found on the course. And I'm going to use this ball out there on a Bama golf course today in the 18 holes that I play. So for the time being, I'll move the camera, I'm gonna enjoy the sunshine, and I'll start hitting some of these balls into this uh, wonderful practice area at Bama. Yes, it's back to good old Blighty, and uh, I'm stuck inside. It's not a bad day out, to be fair, but it's not quite the backdrop of a Bama. But anyway, let's get stuck into this golf ball uh, review. And first of all, let's go back to Obama and see what I did out there on the practice facilities. Life started out a sort of 30 yards short of the green when we was looking at uh, it's a three tier green trying to find that middle tier wasn't too easy but uh, managed to get a future to have a look at don't forget it's a fairly low flighted ball this isn't going to pitch and stop there's going to be a little bit of release and I think that's pretty much what it uh, did on each of those three shots and so far so good um, then moved into some bunker shots again this now is sort of popping the ball up in the air. It's coming down fairly soft. And once again, pretty much does what you'd expect it to do. Although the last ball got a little bit thinner and uh, it zips it back almost straight back off the other side of the green. Um, we then moved to a full shot. So with range finder, this was in and around 100 yards, pitching up the green. Um, again, more steeper descent angle. Uh, and again, pretty much pitching and stopping. Happy with performance from there. Went to green side and what a stunning backdrop that is, I should start by saying. A um, bit of a chip and run. So picking a landing spot sort of halfway there, letting the ball release. And it pretty much did exactly what you'd expect it to do. And again, start to use the word consistency because that's what starts to happen in and around this green side. Um, for a little bit of variation, just threw that ball, open the club face up a little bit and tried to hit a sort of softer, landing and once again you see the ball starts to pitch and stop in its landing position um, and then finally tried the ball in terms of what kind of feel and responsiveness i got from uh, the flat stick and once again it's just that consistency it's a nice feel i think when you get to the putter in your hand and what golf ball you use that is very very much down to individual very much down to individual preference in terms of what you like from a golf ball but overall so far so good but i went on to use this golf ball over on the golf course itself and put it through its paces so you're talking now obviously a driver long irons into bunkers short game onto the putting services the greens themselves are a lot more responsive actually than the ones on the practice area and if i start off there in and around the greens the ball is absolutely superb it did exactly and don't forget when i say exactly what i wanted it to do i don't always have the ability to dictate what the ball does because my strike is variable but when i i'm talking about shots now i'm commenting on shots that i hit well and when i hit the ball well it did what i expected it to do if i didn't hit the ball well if i hit it fat then the results are always going to be different so my opinions are always based on decent shots that i hit really good uh, in and around the greens 
the, for me, the feel from the irons, the mid irons, the long irons, again, really like the way it felt. For me, the premium golf balls have this ability to feel fast off the face and firm when you use them when you want in distance. And then when you're looking for control and responsiveness in and around short, it becomes a very much a softer feel as well. And that's the ability that the golf balls have. So they're almost like a contradictory for me. They're, 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 they're both firm and soft uh, when needed to be. And I think that's what separates the good and bad golf balls. Uh, I, I didn't even, in terms of the driver, I think it's very hard for me to gauge, unless you're in the sort of very firm, uh, almost stone-like golf balls, then yes, they feel terrible off the driver face, but the majority of other golf balls, it's very hard to gauge for me um, uh, uh, and comment on how a golf ball performs off a driver face. I went into, um, into four golf, we tested on Trackman. I'm gonna throw up some numbers here in terms of dry ball data. I use pitching wedge and seven iron. You'll see the numbers are very, very impressive indeed. They're right where you'd want them to be. But once again, it's dry ball data. And for me in ball testing, I've seen from pitching wedge and seven iron, not massive variables to be quite honest with you. I didn't test on driver simply because I think again, the inconsistencies within my strike pattern just don't tell a tale that is relevant to anybody, I don't think, in terms of the numbers I would produce. So that's why that's been eliminated from the test. A lot of people talk about durability, and uh, I don't put this in the test because two reasons is, one, I don't normally keep hold of a golf ball long enough to uh, can be concerned about durability. Um, and the second one, I think it's very hard to measure, really. Uh, but, but for me, what I will say, I played with these golf balls for three rounds, they were, I, I, in, in, I played reasonably well, so I didn't go through many of these, and I kept the ball, and it was in very, very good condition at the end of the round from, from all the types of uh, hits and batters it got and the different terrains it, it, it encountered. The golf ball was in very, very good condition in, in, indeed. Anyway, final thing as ever. I'm gonna go back, it's nice to get back into the ball test. Now, I've done these videos for um, probably about six months or so, but we did do a series early part of the year, and I'm gonna use the same criteria to rate this golf ball and uh, that will be from these sort of icons down below you'll see that uh, we put them into several categories and i scored them accordingly so let's start off first of all with dry ball data and in dry ball data it's hard to be critical in any way at all i'm scoring it a straightforward 10. i'm gonna have to grab a piece of paper because i forgot which order these come up in feel was the next element that we scored in i'm going to score it a 9 out of 10 in terms of feel uh, hard to be critical. I think for me, if I was looking for the ultimate golf ball, maybe just that little bit more uh, softer for me um, in that short end. Although, and I'm talking now about being very, very picky indeed because it is a soft feeling golf ball. Don't get me wrong. Value for money. From what I've seen, in and around £30 a dozen, some people sell them at £25 a dozen online in UK sterling. Um, this is not a, it's still a premium ball as far as I'm concerned in terms of its pricing. In terms of its setup, by the way, this is the same dimple pattern and outer lay that you're finding on the TP5 and the TP5X. So um, you're going to expect it to be premium in terms of its pricing. But in and around £30, I think it kind of, it's expensive, but you're getting a high quality product. So for me, I'm going to score it 8.5. I can't score it any higher than that simply because of the price category that it is in, in terms of offering value. Overall performance, as I glance down one more time, really, really good, really good. Hard to be critical, like I said, from, from start to finish, from driver through to the putter, for me, very, very good indeed. It ticks every box. The element I'm gonna mark it down slightly, like I said, is that little bit of additional feel, or more, when I say feel, a little bit softer in and around the greens. That would be it for me, but then there might be compromise in other areas. But I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10, and that gives it an overall mark of 9.13, which puts it into number three in my top five since I've been rating these golf balls. And arguably, other than the price bracket being 30 pound, it might have crept up quite a bit higher as well. And that's the bit that is very debatable on how you spend your pounds and pence and how you decide what value is. It's a very difficult one to mark, but for me, this golf ball, if it started, if it was into the 20 to 25 pound a dozen category, then it'd be a 10 out of 10 all day long uh, and straight away probably move up into our uh, number one spot. But as it stands, it's number three. 
It was great to be back out ball testing again. It was even better to be ball testing in the sunshine at Obama Golf Club. Thank you to Obama Golf Club for allowing me to use their practice facilities to, uh, to produce this video. Thank you for you to watching. Um, if you liked the video, then hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, then hit the thumbs down. Comment down below because a lot of you, this has been on sale for quite a while now. So if you have used the golf ball, please comment down below how you're finding them. Because for me, your, important, your opinion is far more important than mine. And I think people who read the comments are going to get a good guide, a good reference point as whether or not this is a golf ball they may consider using. So please, please get involved in the comments. That's me. I'm going to sign out. And uh, thank you for watching and I will see you soon.